Hey everyone, welcome to Office Hours. <clears throat> Thanks everyone for attending. I'll just um, give it a few minutes. So for those who um, haven't attended Office Hours before, it's really just an informal um, get together um where some of the engineers contributors um just have general discussions and um, help answer any questions that people may have so um, if anyone wants to ask any questions um, all they need to do is just uh, raise their hand and um, <clears throat> we can put them on stage Hello. Hey. That's, oh, okay. Hey. Yeah, just um, just about to kick it off, Dave. Okay. Cool. Nice. Yeah. So we've got uh, quite a few people in the audience again today. So um, you know, thanks everyone for attending. And I was just saying, um, it's a this, it's a very pretty much an informal. Um, chat and get together here really um, for an opportunity for everyone to just um, ask uh, general questions and uh, we did collect some questions in the um, office hours uh, chat so just having a quick look at some of those and um, yeah maybe, maybe we can make a start on this then because um, I still see that um, <clears throat> we have a large number of newcomers, so it might be worthwhile just recapping because uh, one of the questions uh, that we uh, see quite often is, what's the difference between um, the Tyco, Tyco and other uh, ZK rollups or EVMs like ZK Sync, Polygon, etc.? So um, you know that's that's the very first question. Maybe Dave, do you want to quickly take that one? Um, yeah, so the the primary difference that you'll notice is the trade-off we make on what's known as the ZK EVM types. So a lot of you might uh, already know what that is, but if not, I'll give like a short introduction. Like there is a concept of types to a ZK EVM uh, where there's like type one, type two, type three, type four, and the type that you are is a decision that you make on trading off compatibility with the EVM and with Ethereum for prover performance and the ease of generating proofs. So we decide to be um, all the way to, you could think of all the way to the left of the spectrum, which is the type one, which is not making any uh, trade-offs um, for uh, with compatibility for better proof performance. Um, so. That's the main uh, the, the main difference. Like Tyco is fully Ethereum equivalent in the sense that it's not just um, um, it's not just like the uh, EVM bytecode uh, that we support um, all the operations for, but we also um, the, the nodes on Tyco look the same as like Ethereum nodes. Um, the way that we store um, state and everything looks exactly the same. We use the same hash functions and things like that. Um, so I think that's like the the major difference. Like, um, I think I think Polygon well, I think, is um, type four, um, and then like zk sync yeah. would be type four. Uh, scroll I think is like kind of like type two point five. But yeah, I'm not going to go into too much length with it. But um, basically, you can change parts of the Ethereum stack um, to make it easier to generate proofs. So I think also it's, it's worth mentioning here that um, for the developers, uh, because we are Ethereum equivalent, that the developers don't need to change anything, right? I think that's the real uh, differentiator here. They can just build as they normally do on Ethereum and port their code directly over, over to Tyco. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. And, and you would just, it would just, the environment that you're in, you just don't really need to have any cognitive overhead of like how things might be different. Like, oh, can I send like a Merkle proof, like cross chain or something like that? Like, um, how do things look? Um, you just don't really need to have any uh, considerations as a developer. It just all works exactly the same without any like little caveats. Right, and I, and I also saw um, in Vitalik's uh, document, which talks about the different types of um, EVM, that one of the disadvantages of a type one is the actual proving time. So I, th I think it might be worthwhile just talking quickly around, you know, what Tyco has done around this to um, improve the efficiencies of that and to mitigate that long um, proving time, right? So from um, from a Tyco perspective, we have implemented approximately, I think, 2,000 parallel proofs, uh, parallel proving and um, instant L2 finality, right, Dave? Um, right. And like, um, and again, it's kind of like a perspective thing. Um, I think that, um, Kelvin from Optimism recently gave some talks and there were some talks in the space of how we can think about rollups, like how much does proof generation matter? And in a lot of ways, it's, it's kind of like a pers uh, perspective, uh, thing where, um, because as, as Ben just mentioned, we have this, um, we have this instant finality in quotes, where basically once a block is proposed with some well-defined validity rules, right at that moment that the um, that that proposed block transact transaction gets included in the mempool and some Ethereum uh, L1 client picks it up, at that moment we can determine the L2 state. It's deterministic. So in a lot of ways in terms of the roll-up activity, it doesn't really matter if there's a proof or not a proof. We already know what a well-defined uh, block looks like and the cont chain can progress on even without proofs for a while. It's really just that perspective of withdrawing out of the roll-up where um, having a proof matters. So um, yeah, that perspective is kind of another way to like think of quote unquote solving this prover performance thing. By just kind of saying maybe it doesn't matter so as much in in a, in a lot of the average use cases. Right, right, yeah. So it's um, pretty much uh, uh, up to the individuals then who participate in the network um, and the speed of their machines really then to generate the proofs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, um, that actually is an interesting point because then um, we have a, a question here around um, prover requirements, and um, people uh, would like to know, you know, is is there a possibility that uh, we plan maybe to introduce uh, GPU um, proving in the future uh, rather than the CPU uh, with uh, the high RAM usage? Hmm. Um. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I feel like that's a lower on the priority list to getting like the full circuits completed, um, doing like like some type of like GPU optimizations and such. But just from talking around, it seems like um, in a lot of ways this in, in in kind of the nearest to medium term that generating proofs and what's the right hardware. And what's the right way to set it up on your machine is a little bit of a playground, um, both for the community and like also us, right? Like um, on 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 what's the best combination of of hardware to generate efficient proofs. But I'm not really I'm not really sure where um, GPU or hardware specific optimizations fit in on the roadmap. But I don't think it's anywhere in the near in the near term. Um, could be wrong about that, but that's my understanding. Uh, I, th I think um, I think yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And and in terms of optimizations, <clears throat> I think that depends upon the individual provers themselves, uh, as um, we all learn together um, on what is um, making 
proofs more efficient and in, in being obviously improving the performance based upon you know the number of cores that you're running and also the number the amount of memory as well uh, and including all any instances you're running as well because that may also have an impact uh, but I think at the moment it's it's pretty much you know uh, try out various uh, settings within the prover itself and um, and see how that works out because that, that's the whole idea of the test net, right? Because um, you set things up, you play around with some settings and uh, you optimize it uh, for the way it's uh, particularly run. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we had some discussions about this too, like some with some other folks from ZK EVM and everything, um, the ZK EVM uh, side of the team. And yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Like, you know, we've learned a lot from this test net, but it's, it's interesting to look at this idea of um, of, of the provers and, and how they're in, 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 in kind of in a race to generate a proof. They're in competition with each other. And it's cool to see how like, and we'll definitely try to talk about this more, but it's not, uh, it might not be as obvious uh, to the community that like um, how having provers run in competition with each other um, instead of being like more decentralized so to speak it might not be actually the the best way forward and and in a lot of ways what i'm trying to say is like this competition really um pushes the the industry of like zk so to speak because people are incentivized to get these proofs done fast so like uh, i think that people are going to try to come up with all kinds of solutions on their own accord to try to just generate fast proofs it's just like it's kind of like a free for all market in some way. And I think that's kind of a nice thing. It's cool. Yeah, and ultimately it helps us, um, it helps to bring cheaper transactions, right? To the um, community that uses Tyco in the end. So I don't think it really matters too much as long as the proofs are being generated, they generate at a fast speed and therefore, you know, everybody benefits in terms of low fees right 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 um and then the last thing i'll say i don't want to go too uh long on here but um uh, uh, on this topic but it's like when you think about like what's important for the roll-up some things to keep in mind like when you think of decentralization it's like um you have to think of things like okay can anyone submit a transaction can anyone can uh, create block and then when we say decentralization, like where does the decentralization matter in achieving like the right goals, right? Like we have decentralization on the consensus layer, but um, yeah, where does it matter? Like, does it matter for sec for security? Like decentralization matters on L1 a lot for security, but do you have those same uh, security problems on layer two? Like maybe you don't need as much decentralization and there's um at least with provers and there's other mechanisms that guarantee security such as like multiple proofs and things like that so it's just it's important to think about the context a little bit um with decentralized proving and like um it's a little bit of a semantic thing but like permissionless and decentralized uh, when you when you think of these things like we have to think of like security is a huge one and then like non-censorship right um so yeah i'll just stop there but that's great. Thanks, Dave, for the updates. Um, let's take a um, uh, question then from the audience. And um, I'm going to invite, um, is it DD Wayudin? Let me see if I can do this. Okay, you're invited to speak if you come up on stage. No. Okay, let's uh, let's move on then to a different question. Okay, question from Testnet Walker here is: How does the Tyco project? prioritize transparency 
and what steps have been taken to ensure that users have access to the relevant information about the platform and its operations? So I think um, this is a, you know, an interesting question in terms of um, you know, Tyco, the project itself. We are fully open sourced, so you can actually go onto our GitHub and see all of the information that's um, on there. Um, all of the community can also help to uh, contribute to the code. So if there's anything that they want to do in terms of not only the documentation, but also the coding itself, they are more than you know, ha um, happy to uh, participate. And, and we have ha actually had a number of people who've participated in a number of things on our GitHub. And, you know, as part of that, you know, you're, re you're also rewarded with a, a Git PO app for any help that you guys um, put forward. So it can be anything from, you know, documentation where people have highlighted, you know, um, you know things that may be missing um, as, we as we walk through the test net, you know, uh, maybe instructions can be clearer, for example. Um, if there's um, things that be, can also be improved in the code, people have uh, made suggestions and, um, you know, uh, pull requests from um, GitHub. So from a transparency perspective, everything's open source. Um, we're also uh, developing um, more threads and more blogs for people. So that also helps to promote not only Tyco, but it also helps educate people as well. So we have Lisa here as well, in who's in the audience. Um, she's our uh, technical researcher, and she's doing a fantastic job here, uh, helping everybody understand Tyco a bit more, not only to make things simple, but also you know, to um, describe in more detail how things actually work because you know some people are very technical and they want to know all of the details but some people are not and they just want to know the high levels so i think you know there's a, a fine balance here which um you know lisa's doing a great job on with all of the uh twitter threads and the and the uh, blog posts as well yeah yeah exactly um we do try to focus a lot on that educational aspect because it's open source for sure but also it's no good to us if it's just a bunch of open source code or a complicated white paper that you can't understand how it works so it's important for us to be able to make it easy to understand so you can verify um the protocol um for yourself um hopefully for even more beginner type people so and yeah on top of that it's like it's it's really a community project um if there's something that you don't understand or if there's anything that you uh you know you can't run or understand like if you just open a github issue and get the visibility on it like we'll definitely take a look and there's no like uh <laughs> you know secret initiative or anything we just we want to explain how everything works and um integrate any community feedback that is deemed as 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 good for the project <clears throat> and then also just a random thing like i noticed we're getting some questions like also in the team stage like chat so maybe we can <laughs> maybe we can bounce between the three to make sure we're uh not censoring any question <laughs> yeah sure yeah let's see So yeah, there's there's one here in the chat which says, "What are the plans for developer relations moving forward, uh, and how will you give engineers the tools they need to help get up and running for their DApps?" Right, uh, I can shortly speak on that. Um, the nice thing is that unlike your the way that you might normally think about developer relations, it's like because we inherit the ethereum stack exactly as it is we naturally inherit all of the tutorials and tooling and, and everything that's needed to create dApps all of your little vs code extensions and and gas optimizers and things like that um, they all kind of come for free um, so in a lot of ways it makes that job easier um, but in addition to that um, 
we um, we do try to do like little tutorials and workshops. Uh, Lisa and I gave one for scaling Ethereum. We'll be doing more of those. And um, yeah, we have a huge openness to people building on Tyco. Um, and yeah, you can get featured on our like showcase page if you build something. And we just like seeing, uh, we're happy to support it really in any way. Uh, if there's, we, we have a, a, a guide on our current website on both how to just deploy a simple contract and then also how to build a DAP. Um, the latter is like a little bit more opinionated, but we're all, always going to try to like, uh, you know, make it easy to use. So it's, it's on the forefront of our minds. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's take a question then from the audience. Zero X Chusi, you're invited to speak. Hi guys. Um really happy to to be able to ask the question. I just wanted to know if uh, I understand it correctly. Is uh, Taiko since it's type one ZK rollup, right? Uh, in it uh, validates the blocks in parallel. Is this like a, like some kind of innovation uh, uh, spe specifically for Taiko? And if so, how faster would the, the verification process be compared to other uh, rollups that are type one? Right. Well, currently, um, just answering the, the the very last part. Well. Currently, in terms of type one, it, it there only exists um, Tyco, so it's only Tyco that's currently building that along with uh, the PSE. So in terms of benchmarking activities, there isn't really that much out there at the moment, um, from at least from a, a type one perspective. Um, Dave, I don't know if you want to talk about the um, other ones, maybe the first part of the question. Um, yeah. It it's hard for me to like give actual numbers on it because the um first of all i just don't know what exactly what they are in the current state but they're just kind of always in flux and it's really rapidly evolving but the proof generation time for ethereum blocks as is will you know definitely be a little bit slower but overall for all of the types um we definitely um see proof generation time dropping uh very low um, over time. And on top of that, just um, feel that the proof generation time won't matter so much um, for the, uh, the proof generation time of like full Ethereum blocks won't matter so much for the average user activity because there are some um, ways that we can generate faster proofs um, for like um, withdrawals and then also for the general use case of just using the roll up it we don't feel it'll matter as much so yeah don't have any exact statistics on it but it, it's really in flux and i think it'll just be like um a little bit slower and those are kind of the trade offs to think about thanks I guess he left the stage but yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> Let's take let's take um, a question then from the chat. So <clears throat> Sheen from the audience is asking, um, I assume Tyco's advantages is not to use 128 core CPUs like ZK Sync and Polygon, um, or the plan is to go for that super prover server instance. So I think you know to, just you know we we sort of discussed discussed this briefly before around. Um, provers and the hardware required. Um, in short, we currently are in a test net. So in terms of the number of ZK circuits and the additional optimizations required, this today with what we have is not the end state. So in terms of the actual hardware required, we expect that, you know, or we want everybody to be participating. But in the end, um, as we mentioned earlier, it will be you know a high performance um, hardware that will probably win out because there'll probably be like a race um, to uh, prove the actual blocks themselves. So in terms of the end state of the hardware, I think it's going to be difficult to gauge that until all of the circuits are fully built. Um, and then, you know, we have the optimizations that we mentioned earlier as well. 
Dave, is there anything you want to add to that one? Um, not much. It's just like, um, yeah, I think just like you said, it's going to be in flux for a little bit. Um, and it's just interesting to always ask ourselves these questions. Like if we have kind of like a super prover, like, is that really a bad thing? Does it harm the security? Um, does it cause like censorship resistance, things like that? Um, or does it just generate proofs more cheaply? Um, so yeah, it's going to be in flux for a little bit, but we're definitely trying to think of what's the, the best solution here. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, question then, um, that I'm going to take then from the office hours and it's around security. I think this is um, a very pertinent question. So how does Tyco project address security concerns and what measures have been taken to ensure the security or, or safety of users' funds? Um, wait, if possible, like, can we maybe put that one as the, as the next question? It's just because I saw uh, Helio say that he has a question following up the previous one. So like, just to keep the context like relevant maybe we can bring on helios for the the follow-up question and then and then do the security one all right let's uh, invite invite him to speak hey what's going on hey um so i think uh, some i was thinking about this you know as the prover gets stronger and stronger and we've seen some of the top ones having like you know a terabyte of ram it's crazy but I think thinking in context is a good point, Dave, about their proposer that we saw in the first test net was really lower, uh, much lower uh, machinery hardware. So maybe there is this situation where if you can't participate as a prover, you're still able uh, to participate as a proposer with less hardware. Is that something like the balance of those two that maybe one is more for specific, you know, big boys, basically machines? and proposers can be more community members. Is there any kind of conversation happening around that? Um, yeah, I think that could very well end up being the balance in some way. It also might not be, I'm not sure, um, but it, it, it definitely is a lower barrier to entry now and, and probably for the future to, to be a, um, a block proposer than a, than a full on prover. Like a block proposer would eventually just need a lot of storage, really, as the main bottleneck. Um, so I, I could see that happening. And I think Ben said something interesting earlier, uh, not in this call, but <laughs> about like um, pools, like like proving pools and things like that. I'm not sure of the technical, um, all all of the little technical bits of of how you would have like a proving pool, but maybe something like that could, could happen in the future to bring in um, people who don't have um, as, as high, uh, as, as good hardware of like a uh, uh, rocket pool, for example, caters to people who don't have so much ETH, but they can stake. Um, it's possible something like that could happen too. Yeah, that would be really interesting. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. No, just, just, so just to follow up on that, yeah, the whole discussion was, you know, we noticed in the community people talking about proving and how how difficult it is to prove a block, even though they have high performance um, hardware out there. So, yeah, you know, I, I asked the question within the team um, about, around, you know, you know, this is what we're seeing from the community. So we do listen to you guys. And we also want to make sure that you know we come up with other um, options and ideas, and to see if there's um, such an opportunity as well. So you know, one of the options um, uh, or ideas that we put, uh, I threw forward was, you know, is there even a possibility that people can pool resources? You know, pool the hardware. You know, like uh, the way people uh, do different types of other mining. So maybe maybe that is an option in the future. So it's something that we will look at as well. Okay, then let's go back to the um, office hours question. I think that this is this will probably be the last one because uh, we're out of time today. 
Um, but the aim is, you know, we plan to do these um, calls um, more frequently, bi-weekly. So, uh, you know, every every couple of weeks we'll have, um, you know, diff different um, questions and, um, yeah. So let's take this um, last question. So how does Tyco project address security concerns and what measures have been taken to ensure the safety of user funds? So I think, um, you know, we, we talked about um, Tyco being a type one and that we inherit all of Ethereum's um, security from at least that part. But going forward, you know, we do have our own smart contracts on both L1 and L2. So those will be and um, have been audited. So we will get, we will go through um, a number of um, iterations. And obviously before we go in, into mainnet, you know, you guys in the uh, community also see and can play with everything that uh, we come up with as well. So from a security standpoint, we have a lot of uh, technical people out there who are helping us um, contribute not only to the code but all to everything that we you know that we are doing. So from a security standpoint, this opens up the transparency to the whole community. It opens up um, all of the code so that all the developers can um, scrutinize everything that's going on, uh, and that helps with all of the um, initial security concerns that people may have that obviously doesn't mean that there will uh, that there aren't any bugs because even as you know with um, code that is audited things crop up in the future so um, yeah it's um, the more eyes on this the better from from our perspective yeah and i'll say one other thing it's like um, you always have that code risk which um, auditing can help with and our community education and people looking at the code base can help with. But there's also like a nice thing that Ethereum does um, for security, um, which is it's like execution client diversity. Um, because if you have like a diverse set of something, then the probability of them both like failing at the same place is a lot lower. So um, for example, like, um, we haven't gotten there yet, but, you know, if, for example, the execution client that um, people were running on Tyco had a bug, then you would just be proving something invalid anyway. So, like, one way that we'll achieve some better sec um, security is having, like, um, execution client diversity and also proof diversity. It's like this idea of having diversity in the code that you're running, but they have the same interface and do the same thing is a really great way to deal with security that like Ethereum does. So we keep all of those things in mind, right? And one other thing is like, this kind of extends outside of just Tyco scope and like roll up security in general. But I think like platforms, like you might be familiar with like L2 beat. If not, you can just like Google L2 beat. But like, there are some ideas that people have put forward in the general Ethereum space. like. One of them is this idea of like roll up training wheels. And, and one of the requirements for progressing through the roll up training wheels is like that diversity thing that I, I, I just said, like having like some proof diversity and like taking Tyco and making sure that we um, abide by all of these kind of standards that people can understand easily on sites like L2B, um, I think is a way that we can get some social um, consensus on like how good is like Tyco security? So like, yeah, on the technical level, like we are like tuned in and have like ideas of how to deal with the security. And then from the user perspective, like we hope to like be on those things like LGB. And we also try to like push for that too. Like uh, we have like a roll up glossary. If you go to like our, our uh, docs at Tyco.xyz, like you'll see under resources, there's a roll up glossary. And the intent for that is to be like not just like Tyco education, but rollups in general. So like, yeah, I think a lot of this uh, security stuff is is um, uh, on the education perspective is, is important for like all the rollups, like not just us. So yeah, As those are my only comments on that. And yeah, That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think uh, we're we're out of time now. Um... But yeah, like I said, um, guys in the community, guys and girls, you know, 
feel free to uh, you know participate in our community ask us questions um we're always here and um yeah you know we'll be doing more of these so feel free you know to pop up on the stage and, and ask any questions in the future but as, as i mentioned this is a very for informal type um, environment so you know no need to be shy just feel free to ask any questions and um, learn more about Tycho. And, um, you know, people from the audience, you know, you guys can also come up on stage and also help some of these, uh, help to answer some of these as well, if you uh, feel up to it. Uh, because this is a, more of like a community type um, initiative from our side. So with, with that, uh, we'll probably see, and see you in um, two weeks time. Take care, everyone. Thank you for joining. All right, see you guys.